Good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. Praise God. He's awakened us to a new day, a new opportunity to seek his face, to rely on him, to fellowship in his truth, his grace, his mercy, his love, to walk with him on the earth, knowing that he loves you and cares for you and provides for all your needs. Know God this morning and know his goodness because he cares for you. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we exalt your name. We praise you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, dear God, for choosing us to be your children object of your love given us all that we need to walk worthily before you in relationship like your son Jesus Christ did help us father to know the right way to understand your will and your truths so that we might honor you with our obedience I ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So today's daily devotional is titled, Lead Gently. From 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 26. And it says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do ginger gender strifes and the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach and patient and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. God is there providing a way of escape for us from the snares of the devil. Okay, we're in section three this morning. Goodness through the Spirit. Compassionate Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. It says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Goodness is the quality of moral excellence, a willingness to share with others, and a concern for the well-being of others. Goodness is one of God's most important moral attributes. The psalm states repeatedly, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Through the Holy Spirit, God shares his goodness with us, thereby transforming us and making us good. Goodness is the opposite of selfishness and apathy. The story of the Good Samaritan illustrates the fruit of goodness. When a man was attacked, robbed, and beaten by thieves, a certain priest and a Levite would not stop to help him. See Luke chapter 10 verses uh, 31 through 32. These two men represented the most religious segments of Judaism. They were devout and faithful followers of the scriptures. However, according to Jesus, they had neglected the weightier matters of the law justice, 
mercy and faith. See Matthew 23, 23. Their rigid rules and correct theology did not give them goodness. When a certain Samaritan saw the victim, he had compassion on him. See Luke 10, 33. Although Samaritans were not accepted by the Jews, this good man was willing to rescue the injured Jew and pay for his medical treatment. God does not evaluate our Christian life according to the world's standards. Instead, we are judged according to God's standards. God does not require that we accommodate wealth, achieve fame, accomplish great feats, or reach the pinnacle of leadership. However, he does require us to be good as he is good. God's greatest word of approval is this, well done, good and faithful servant. That's from Matthew 25, 23. Is the fruit of goodness evident in your life? All right, section 3B, tender-hearted believers. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. The Apostle Paul repeatedly mentions the fruit of goodness in his letter to the Ephesians. Before mentioning goodness in chapter 4, verse 29, he insists no corrupt word should come out of a Christian's mouth. The Greek word sarpos, translated as corrupt, is used literally to describe stinking, spoiled fish. See Matthew 13, 48. And rotten fruit. See Luke 6, 43. We must remember our words indicate the condition of our hearts because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's Matthew 12, 34. Instead of corrupt speech, we are instructed to speak forth words that are good for the use of edifying. Ephesians 4.29 The word edifying means building up. Therefore, good words are constructive and helpful. Corrupt words tear down, but good words build up. Our words are powerful, giving grace to those who hear them. Good words convey a blessing. Good words meet the needs of those to whom we speak and the needs of the specific occasion. Speaking good words might also include the proper use of scripture. See 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 16. Speaking corrupt words offends the Holy Spirit who is working in the midst of the church to build unity and community. The church needs the Spirit's presence and ministry, but corrupt words will drive away the Spirit. Furthermore, the fruit of goodness is opposite to bitterness, anger, shouting, and slander. See Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. The fruit of goodness 
will cause us to be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Kindness is a gracious attitude toward other people. The word tender-hearted means compassionate. It is sharing in the feelings of others, especially when they are suffering. Forgiveness is based on Christ's forgiveness of us. Jesus warns us sternly, But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And that's from Matthew 6, 15. Okay, section 3, Children of Light. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. It says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. As a fruit of the Spirit, goodness is a sign we are walking in the light. Before we came to Christ, we lived in spiritual and moral darkness. But now, we are living in God's light. In fact, we are children of light. Which means, light is a part of our nature as believers. As we allow the light to control our attitudes and actions, the Spirit will produce in us goodness and righteousness and truth. Furthermore, as we walk in the light and walk in the Spirit, we will be able to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. We have the Ten Commandments and the ethical guidelines of the New Testament to direct us into correct moral choices, but we also have the Holy Spirit to guide us, especially when decisions are beyond the clear moral laws of Scripture. It is an insert here titled, God's Transforming Light. It says, To stand before the Holy One of eternity is to change. Resentments cannot be held with the same tenacity when we enter His gracious Light. It was written by Richard J. Foster. Okay, conclusion. Relational good fruit. We began this lesson talking about the attributes of God, the attributes listed in God's self-revelation to Moses are not abstract philosophical qualities. They are relational attributes merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness, forgiving, yet by no means clearing the guilty. By saying that we are relational, we mean each of these attributes is aimed towards someone with whom God shares a relationship. The Lord is merciful gracious and good to a certain person at a certain time and in a certain place. These attributes do not exist in a vacuum. They are responses to someone. The Lord is long-suffering in response to Israel's sin, and He is abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness toward his people with whom he is joined in covenant. The fruit of the Spirit corresponds to God's relational characteristics. Our long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness are spiritual qualities that exist only as we relate to other people. We are long-suffering toward people who create unpleasant situations. We are gentle toward people who want to argue. 
and we are good to everyone, even those who are not good to us. These fruits exemplify how we should behave as we interact in the church <coughs> and in the world. Finally, in the same way the goodness of God led us to repentance in Romans 2 4, the goodness of God's people will draw unbelievers to the gospel. Amen. We have an opportunity as we live for God, seek His face, and desire to walk in His ways. To be that light, the light that people see, that draw them to Christ. And we develop a love and care for one another that God requires of us. We are to care like He cares, love like He loves, be long suffering, patient, gracious, good, meek. Just like God is. That's how we are to relate with our brothers and sisters. And so, we need to take the opportunity to practice these fruits of the Spirit. So that we walk worthily before God. As Christ did on the earth over 2,000 years ago. I thank you for your time this morning. I pray this lesson encourages you. To seek God's will for your for your life, and to practice the fruits of the Spirit, walking in His truth. Thank you, and have a wonderful Thursday.